Hi there Booktube and welcome to a new video. Yes I'm back in the library that is in my shed. Uh, today's going to be a combination of two uh, videos. The first is the A to Z author tag part two. Uh, I'll post the link to part one which is for women authors. Today therefore is going to be male authors. And uh, the second part is an update on uh, my shelf situation because last time, uh, and again I'll post a link to this, you may remember that I thought I was going to solve my uh, overcrowding situation um, with this little chap. <laughs> it looked bigger in the Amazon page. There you go, four rows. Um, took me about 25 pay, uh, minutes to build. Lovely shade of lime green. And it took about 40 books off my massive overcrowding crisis. Uh, but look, we sort of pull back. I have solved it. I bought another three, that's about 120 books, no, 160 books off the shelves, which means, look, I can see the name of every single book on the spine of my fiction for the first time in many, many years, which will make finding stuff a lot easier. So although there's a few books sort of still stacked horizontally on top of others, but you you know they're not blocking anything, as was the situation before. You can't believe how incredibly excited I am about this. And when I made my uh, shelf video before I actually built it and saw how small it was, I did announce that uh, I take you through my uh, filing system logic, because uh, there is one, uh, probably understood only by me. Um, and I thought that would sort of come out maybe in uh, in doing the tag itself. So, you know, I'm jolly excited by today. This is the first time I can actually see what I'm looking for easily at a stroke. Just a quick update. Uh, this was after the mould spray treatment. It hasn't seemed to have any effect, which actually thinks this isn't actually mould. I don't know what it is. It's an, There are odd patterns for it just to be sort of water leaks. I mean, something like that. I don't know if you can see that. Something like that could be a water leak, but these sort of discolorations, I don't know what they are. Um, I mean, that looks pretty bad. So I might give this another spray, but I don't actually think this is a mould problem. Um, and as I said before, look at that. The same colour as the mould almost. Um, so I won't actually be using any of the books um, from these shelves. So the logic uh, of the filing, such as it is, is that I took the opportunity to use these shelves to mainly have my non-fiction in. I mean, there's still like the bigger books, the art books, and the books on body and mind. There's some art books, including The Shock of the New by Robert Hughes, which is excellent. Uh, dance. Um, no, the dance stuff. Yes, uh, is the dance stuff there? Yeah, dan dance stuff there. But mainly, the non-fiction is here. And in doing this, um, I've heard some sort of really interesting stuff that I'd like to get back and read sometime. Um, such as, you know, a book like this, The Body, which is mainly photographic based. But I remember there was this thing, I think, on Maya Hold, the guy who did the sort of stop, you know, the broke, the sort of set his camera up to get every single movement of a horse. And that led to the debate is do horses who's ever all four of them come off the ground at one time um i just think there's some in interesting stuff in these shelves which if i had the time which unfortunately i don't i'd like to reread so um that is generally the body and mental health that is death a whole section on death this is death continued but also uh life so a life's work rachel cusk um the Triumph of the Embryo, which is a brilliant sort of uh, scientific uh, but accessible book on the development of the embryo, uh, which I use as a basis for background knowledge for my current novel. Um, this is about language and thought, and you can see whatever happened to modernism there. Uh, this is um, about sort of folklore. Marina Warner's excellent No Go the Bogeymen and uh, folklore from different continents. Benedict Allen through Jaguar's Eyes, that's in the Amazon. This is about sort of urbanism and um, cultures. There's one on Russia, the Peter Pomerantsov book, which is very good. Book on um, 
uh, Jamaica, Peter Hooks, the Hacienda, How Not to Run a Club, um, that sort of cities, that, that sort of psychoanalysis, Jung, um, Theolite, a fantastic book on, on the sort of mental makeup of the Nazis, of, of the would be Nazis between the wars. Highly recommended that book. This is slightly more the sort of spiritual side to sort of therapy and self help. I don't really do self help, although we've got um, uh, Melanie Klein, is it Melanie Klein or Naomi Klein? I can't remember her name now, um, who I studied at college. This goes all the way back to when I was 20. Uh, Melanie Klein, yeah, about uh, a, a alternative to Freudian psychology. And again, here, sort of more folklore, the Women's Encyclopedia of Myths and, si and uh, Secrets, Natural Symbols by Mary Douglas, bit of Oliver Sacks. And as I said last time, this is my crime fiction. OK, so I won't be using these shells. I just thought I'd give you a quick guide uh, to the logic such as it is. OK, so on with the tag. And we're going to start with A for Paul Oster. Oh, I ought to say before I start this that I'm going by who I have the most books by, but there must be books that I've read, not TBRs, although all my TBR stuff is actually in the house and not in here. So Paul Oster, of which I have four. So you'll see three here. The New York Trilogy, which is his debut. Uh, the Country of Last Things and The Invention of Solitude. And I also have, which is straight away at the letter A, you see how my system f fails. I have Paul Oster 4321, uh, which should obviously by right be with these, but I can't fit it in. Um, so I just want to talk about this one briefly, the New York Trilogy, as I say, his debut. Um, this was so good, a sort of postmodernist metaphysical de uh, detective novel where... He's not formally a detective, the character, but he sort of, you know, accidentally uh, sort of intercepts a phone call and uh, then goes on a journey to trace uh, the person on the other end. And as with metaphysical detective novels, he's really searching for himself. And the problem I have with Paul Oster is that he's never bettered it. I mean, imagine that as an author, the best book you write is your first one. How do you, you know, what happens to your career after that? I mean, obviously he's been incredibly successful and has people reading his books. But, you know, I, I found that for him that book has never been better. You, of course, may disagree. Uh, B is for William Burroughs, who happens to be on the same shelf, fortunately. So I probably have more Burroughs books, uh, except possibly by my letter D choice, which we'll see in a minute. So starting with Junkie, um, The Last Words of Dutch Schultz, The Western Lands, uh, Exterminator, The Ticket That Exploded, the Naked Lunch, um, My Education, A Book of Dreams, which I really don't remember at all. Our Pook is Here, um, Ghost of a Chance, uh, then a three and one. We've got The Soft Machine, Nova Express and The Wild Boys. Uh, a Report from the Bunker with William Burroughs. That was um, that sort of non-fiction about him, because when in his later life he retired literally to a bunker in Kansas. He moved out of New York. The Place of Dead Roads and Literary Outlaw, which is a, a thick biography of the man. Um, so three of these are a trilogy, which was The Western Lands, The Place of Dead Roads, and my favourite Burroughs book, Cities of the Red Night, which I don't actually have, because I remember I read it from the library. Um, so even though it's my, my favourite Burroughs book, it's the one that I don't have, and I really should invest in it. OK, let us see. Italo Calvino, a sort of postmodernist Italian author. So, The Castle of Cross Destinies, uh, Mar Invisible Cities, which is the first book of his I read and blew me away. Uh, Marco Valdo. Uh, what's this one called? Under the Jaguar Sun, Time and the Hunter, Our Ancestors, and If on a Winter's Night a Traveller. I'm trying to think which one of these was based on the folk tales. Italian folk tales. No, it's not that one. It must be Our Ancestors. Yeah, I think it is this one. Yeah. So this is sort of three uh, Italian folk tales, all about sort of the end of medievalism and chivalry and knights and moving towards the sort of the, the modern world, or the pre-modern world, pre-industrial world. Um, and one of them is a brilliant story of uh, a knight uh, battle against the Turks, and he gets split in half his, down the middle of his armour by a cannonball. And the two halves go on living and take different paths. Uh, another one is uh, The Baron Who Lives in the Trees. 
um, a guy who's, you know, a, a, an aristocrat who goes and lives in a trend and will never set foot on on, ground, on soil again because that soil has been taken away from, from his family. But my favourite one is, uh, I can't remember what it's called, but it's about an empty suit of armour who exists, believing he still exists as a knight. And it's just a brilliant story about the end of that whole sort of way of life. So that is C, Italo Calvino, D, Don DeLillo. I think this is the person I have the most books by. So Zero K, which is his last one, A Meditation on Death and Cryogenics. Uh, Falling Man, which is about 9-11. Uh, Point Omega, Underworld, which I think was the first DeLillo book I read. You can see how thick it is. And it's sort of about 60s America, Kennedy, Cuban Missile Crisis, Bear Pigs. And it's, it's, a, it's a sort of, you know, freewheeling you know, conspiracy theory laden, paranoia novel, it's great. Don Delillo The Names, which is set in Greece. Don Delillo White Noise and Mal 2 Nectar, which are two fantastic books about sort of, you know, media and how that affects our culture. Very sort of fragmented, almost like, you know, channel hopping. They're both great books. Uh, Americano, which is one of his first and not his greatest, to be honest. The Angel Esmeralda, Nine Stories. I don't know if his... I don't know if that's his only collection of short stories. There's a really good one there about uh, a jogger in a park. Uh, Cosmopolis, which is probably my favourite, made it to my top ten on the booktube tag. Endzone, uh, which uses uh, American football, gridiron football, as a sustained metaphor for nuclear you know, face-off between Russia and America. Great Jones Street, about a rock and roller. Running Doll, which is about a... a pursuing a film that is supposedly made in Hitler's bunker and, you know, all the interest that's generated by that. So Don Dillo, a really important author to me, as you can see. I think the only one of his books that I've never read is Libra, which I think is similar to Underworld, but I've never read it. I also haven't read Ratner's Star, because that's been really panned. OK, E is for Geoffrey Eugenides on the same shelf. So we've got Middlesex. We've got the Virgin Suicides, and we've got the Marriage Plot, which I think is that is that all? Is he written four or three? He write he basically publishes a novel every ten years, so it's not exactly prolific. I do have upstairs in my TBR um, a book of his short stories to read. Um, have I missed any out? Is there a fourth one? Let's have a look at the Marriage Plot, which was his last, other than the short stories, and let's see. Here we go. My Mistress's Sparrow is Dead, in which he was the editor. So, no, I think he has only written three these three novels. I love Jeffrey Eugenides. And I, I saw a video where he was speaking about somebody, I think about Foster Wallace. And uh, very dapper he looks, too. He's like a really cool dude. He looks a tiny bit like the, the master in Doctor Who. Not the John Sim master, the original John Pertwee uh, Nemesis Master. OK, that was E, so F is Michel Faber. Now, in my system... Have you worked out my system yet? Because I haven't. Oh, yeah, here we are. Michel Faber. Um, next to Calvino, funny enough. So, uh, The Book of Strange New Things, which is definitely in my all-time top ten. Uh, the Fire Gospel, which was his book under the um, Canongate Gate Myths series, and the first book of his I read and came across. Never heard of him before that, and I love that book. And uh, it's about an archaeologist finding an ancient find in Syria. This was before the Civil War in Syria. Uh, the Courage Consort, brilliant book. Under the Skin, well, I, I've never met someone who hasn't loved Under the Skin. What a book that is. Some Rain Must Fall, which is one of his many short story collections. The only one I've read. I've got all of the others on my TBR pile. So that is Michel Faber, F.G. OK, G is uh, William Gaddis. Two books, A Gape A Gape, which I read this year. And oh, what a fantastic book that is. It's basically an author in a hospital um, trying to complete his last novel before he dies, which is the exact situation that Gaddis found himself in. And it's a fantastic novel. He's sort of his his failing body. He sort of has staples in his legs. He refers to his skin as parchment. So it's like his whole life has been writing, and in death, his body has sort of mutated or whatever, or, or, or sort of de-evolved into almost being like books and paper. And the other one up here is Carpenter's Gothic, which I finished reading not that long ago, a couple of weeks ago. And upstairs I have uh, one of his two magnum opuses. It's called The Recognitions. It's a 957 pages long. So when I do finally read it, I'm going to have a problem. 
of consistency because there's no room at the end on this shelf so it might entail a little jigging out so this shelf you might be able to tell Joshua Cohen, Jonathan Leatham, Blake Butler then went to the real 60s um, postmodernists although um, White and Marks and there were a bit later than that Mulligan Stew by Sorrentino um, Rob Coover, the daddy of postmodernism uh, so these are basically sort of postmodernists, or you know, slightly tricky, tricky writers. Although Saffron Furs in there is probably wrong, so it's not a perfect system as you can see. So H. Michel Houellebecq uh, writes. Not everyone likes Michel Houellebecq, and I understand why. They can feel very provoked, or um, they feel he's politically unsound. But all I'm going to po point to you is the map and the territory submission, which is his last novel. The Possibility of an Island, and that's not a whale bag, Atomized. And then I've got two in paperback, Platform, which is the first one of his read, and whatever. And you will see, I have four hardback books of whale bag. That is how much I like him, because as you can see, I don't buy a lot of hardbacks, but I have four out of six of whale books in hardback. That's how much I like him. OK, on to I. And I struggled for I. Uh, I had... I have read uh, Eugene Ionescu's, uh, several of his plays, including Rhinoceros and the Chairs, but um, I don't have any of them in play script. I don't think any of those are his. No. Um, so I don't actually own any, but I have read them. Uh, but I recently saw, I think, um, Eric Carl Anderson mentioned that he'd written a novel. Uh, not Eric Carl Anderson, that UNESCO had written a novel, and um, I didn't know that, so I'm going to track that down, and that will be my I. Uh, J. Well, we come to uh, B.S. Johnson, British postmodernist writer of the 60s. Uh, we have Troll, we have, I can't read that because the spine colour, not that one, I'll come back to that one. Uh, oh, yes, uh, the double entry of Christy Mallory. Uh, not quite sure why that is in the middle of my B.S. Johnson. I told you my file system wasn't perfect. Um, Albert Angelo and House Mother Normal. And we come to The Unfortunates, which is uh, one of my favourite uh, books of all time. So, you know, sort of fairly unprepossessing cover, you think. But actually, it's not a book. It's a box in the form of a book. And what this is, as you can see, that says first. So the chapters are like sort of pamphlets, staple pamphlets. One is marked first, one is marked last, somewhere, take my word for it. But the point is you can read them, the rest, in any order you want. And <laughs> it's genius. And then the premise of it is it's a, a, a sports reporter going out to a Midlands town in the UK to cover a football match. But it's a town he knows well because he's um, he went to university there and has a friend who's dying of cancer. And it's a mixture of go on the day of the match and, and sort of revisiting the architecture that he knows so well, flashbacks to with his friend, and the match itself. And the match ends with this his his report on the match. And what you realise is, you know, there's nothing as quite so banal as, as sports reporting, because how many times can you describe kicking a ball into a goal? You know, language sort of fails. And that's the point about the rest of the book, about death. Trying to get to grips with death through language. It's a brilliant book. I do have a focus on B.S. Johnson in one of my early videos. I will post the link to it. That is J. K. It's a Mr. Kafka, one of my all-time favourites. So... We have America, which I read this year and was my completion of Kafka, because I've now read everything by him. Last year I read The Complete Short Stories, The Trial, uh, and Metamorphosis and other stories. Metamorphosis is in my all-time top ten stories, in the, again, in that tag. Uh, the only one I don't actually own is The Castle, because I, I took that out of my college library. When I was at university, I was studying history, so I didn't do a lot of reading for pleasure. And if I did, I tended to buy the books. But that was one instance where I went into my university library thinking, hey, there's going to be books in here that I can't get elsewhere. And the one that I pulled out was The Castle. And what a brilliant book it is. It's my favourite Kafka book. And again, I don't own it. I should do something to rectify that. OK, J.K.L. Jonathan Lethem. 
So we have The Blot, which is his last novel. Uh, Chronic City, which is a fantastic novel about New York. It's just brilliant. It goes off in so many different directions, but so ingeniously. Uh, and Other Stories, which again I think is his first collection. Dissident Gardens, which is about sort of left-wing politics in, in New York, which is an in, you know something I didn't know a lot about and was very interesting. It's fiction. Uh, Motherless Bro Brooklyn, which is a you know one of his he started off writing sort of genre works but with a tweak so this is a detective style story although the main character is not a detective and that main character has Tourette syndrome and they're just these amazing word explosions on the page it's just fantastic and then gun with occasional music again a sort of genre book oh that's also noir he's also written lots of sort of science uh, genre books. The Fortress of Solitude was his first, which I've sort of, I've parked, I've, st I've started it, but I've parked it because it's incredibly dense. Uh, just to say, this is shelf one of my women's fiction. It's obviously not in play today, uh, but was in play in the previous one. And this is shelf two. They're sort of vaguely, um, sort of in terms of, these are supposedly slightly older, um, uh, books than these, but it's it's not a, a pure thing at all. Um, L M. Okay, can I find my M's? Um, can I find my M's? <laughs> it's here somewhere, I think. Not the Delillo shelf. Um, Again, not quite au okay with my own system because it's sort of got like an archaeological dig. It was sort of revealed back to me uh, with once I got all the other stuff off it. Um, where is... Ah, oh, here's my M's. OK. Um, ben Marcus. Again, dedicated video to him. He's probably my favourite current author. The Flame Alphabet, which is just a brilliant, brilliant novel. It's his last novel. Uh, notable American Women, which I think was uh, his craft coming together. It's not one of his best, but it, you can see what he was doing there, fed into his more accomplished works. The Age of Wire and String, which is my all-time number one in my top ten uh, booktube uh, tag. This is a book of short stories called Leaving the Sea, uh, which was his last book, last published book. I am desperately craving something new from Ben Marcus. Please get on with it, Ben. In, into, for the first time today, the science fiction section. Yes, a whole shelf of science fiction. I don't read a lot of science fiction, but enough to pad out a, a shelf, which is quite pleasing. So I have Jeff Noon, Pollen, Vert, which I'll come back to in a minute, Mapalujo, um, Vert again. again. I'll explain why that in a minute. Uh, Needle in the Groove. So, first things first, this is the 25th anniversary of it, and look, I've got a signed copy from Jeff, which I won in a Twitter science fiction storytelling competition, which Jeff ran. So I was very pleased about that. Now, there's two types of Jeff Noon sort of novels. There's these ones like Pollen and Vert, and to some extent Needle in the Groove, which are all set in Manchester, where he grew up, I think. Um... And they're sort of urban, sort of, you know, lots of genetic splicing, so people sort of, you know, choose their own appearance, and, you know, they're sort of dog boys and other half-animal, I think, uh, you know, wolves and all this sort of stuff. So, you know, there's that sort of fairly recognisable sort of um, genre work. But then you get books like Mapalujo here, and also one upstairs in my all-time library, which is Cobalingus, which came in second in my all-time top ten. Mapalujo, which he co-wrote with Steve Beard, is a lovely idea where it is a beautifully told story about a sort of a, a Disney world type reality where everyone wears masks. Uh, but what, what they do in the book is it's split up into sections. At the head of the section, there's a list of sort of um, famous people, artists, singers, all that kind of stuff. So here, here's one. 
John Mi Michel Basquiat, Sophie Cal, The Clash, Salvador Dali, Richie Edwards from Manic Street Peaches, Atom Egoyan, the filmmaker, Tracy Emin, the artist, Sigmund Freud, Donna Haraway, Mariko Mori, Public Image Limited, and Patti Smith. And the, um, they wrote alternate chapters, Beard and, and Noon, and they drew, you know, one of the names out of this list. And as I say, there are several lists. Each section has its, a new list of people. And they had to write the next chapter of the book, and it is a coherent, plotted book. You know, this isn't random stuff that changes from chapter to chapter. In the style, or ref or somehow referring to the person they drawn out of the hat. So, you know, there'll be one in the style of the Clash or whatever. And it's highlighted, and this one, it's Salvador Dali. It's highlighted which one they are, you don't have to guess. And it's a great concept, and, and it works really well. And as I say, it's a really coherent book. It's about four people moving about in this sort of Disneyland, each searching for a missing person. And it comes together brilliantly. Normally, when writers sort of, you know, bring all these stray sort of plot lines together it's really bad but noon does it exemplary okay that's n oh i only have a single volume of this author although it is part the first part of a trilogy uh, the first thing is i have to try and find it um no, i knew this one was going to be tricky to find because it is only one book uh he is called david ola o-h-l-e and he's american um it should be in the American section, one would have thought. Uh, no. <laughs> Irritatingly. Oh, he might be in the postmodern section. Uh, yeah, here we go. Motorman. What a very odd book this is. Um... You know, normally when you talk about world building, you think about a sort of science fiction or a fantasy something. But this is... He builds a world, but it's, it's Earth, and it's it's sort of recognisable, uh, you know, to some extent. But it's very off kilter, and that is where the world world building comes in. It's quite it's quite it's a mixture of sort of intense because you have to concentrate on on it in order to be within the world of the book. But it's it's also, you know, it's quite funny. It's quite offbeat. That is David Earl Motorman. P. Back to the science fiction. Victor Pelevin. So, The Helmet of Horror, which again is one of those Cannon Gate myths, and that's how I discovered Victor Pelevin, again, someone I'd never heard of. Um, then we have The Clay Machine Gun, Snuff, which was a hilarious book. I think it crept into my top five from last year. Uh, Empire of Each is his last book, and is terrible. Um, and The Sacred Book of the Werewolf, which a lot of people have heard of and is very good. Um, the Life of Insects, and Omen Ra. Um, Pelevin is, is a Russian, and he grew up just as communism was collapsing. And his books are a mixture of sort of, you know, mad Russian bureaucracy meets um, uh, Buddhism <laughs> meets science fiction. Um, you know, he's a, very, he's a very interesting read. And again, I've got a dedicated video to him, which I'll post, which basically concentrates on snuff. Q. Well, unlike women who I had Anne Quinn somewhere, will be on this shelf, I think. Um... <laughs> Curses. Is she on this one? Um... Oh, how irritating. The one time I'm going to refer to my women's section in this video and I can't find the books that I want. There we are, Anne Quinn. OK, so I had a queue for women, but I don't have one for men. I've never read, or I certainly don't own, a book uh, written by a male author whose name begins with Q. So, on to R, and that can only be Philip Roth, the year we sadly lost him. Uh, so we've got uh, Deception, the great American novel, which I read this year, and will almost certainly get into my top ten of the year. It's hilarious about baseball, but... It's so much more than that. American Pastoral, which is in my all-time top ten. And The Counter Life. So, I think Roth wrote about 30-odd novels. As you can see, I've only got, what, five here. So, he's someone I'll read every so often. Um, you know, sample another one. Uh, he's a bit hit and miss for me, but I'm very happy with this sh small collection because they're all pretty much hits, with two of them being supreme. Big American Pastoral and the Great American Novel. I haven't read the Portnoy series or the Goodbye Columbus, all of that sort of, you know, sort of Jewish um, sort of angst and sexual angst in, in particular. They don't 
really appealed to me. I quite like the sound of uh, Sabbath's Theatre, so I might I might go and read that one. S, which will definitely be on the same shelf as um, Burroughs and Roth, as it happened. Hubert Selby. So we have The Demon, Song of the Silent Snow, The Room, Waiting Period, Last Exit to Brooklyn. So in the sort of chronology of my reading, once I started, I started with Albert Camus. I can't quite remember how I got into William Burroughs, but he was pretty much my next sort of author that I immersed myself in. And when I'd done with Burroughs, Hubert Selby was the next one. And, and he, he reminds me of David Mamet, although he preceded Mamet, in his, his sort of, you know, his use of language and his dialogue is how people really speak. It's really about the rhythms and, and the sort of slang and words that sort of trail off. And it's just brilliant. I really like Hubert Selby. Uh, on to tea. Surprisingly, you'd think there are lots of authors beginning with tea. I've already struggled, and I've only got two books by this one. Uh, it's Rupert Thompson, Divided Kingdom, which is a really interesting book I'll talk about in a second, and Soft, which I must admit I can't remember anything about. But Divided Kingdom's interesting because it sort of uses Shakespearean humours, um, you know, the sort of four... Uh, Phlegm, blood, black bile, yellow bile, which in Jacobean and Shakespearean times was the sort of the medical system of mental health. That if they were all in balance, you had a sort of balanced mental health. Whereas if one predominated over the others, so for example, if black bile was in the ascendancy, that would tend to make you melancholic. Uh, yellow bile was phlegmatic, red blood was sanguine, and what have I missed out? Uh, f no, phlegm was phlegmatic, sorry. Yellow bile was... Oh, I can't remember now. Bilious, I think. Angry. Anyway, so Thompson has sort of done the same thing, where four different character types within an unnamed uh, kingdom, which I think is supposed to be Britain, they're all sort of separated one from another because of the sort of incendiary uh, thing of when they when they meet. So they're all, you know, all the angry people are together, and all, all the sort of... Uh, depressed people are together and they're sort of fenced off from one another and the book is uh, a, a trip through there someone basically illegally is traveling through all four kingdoms um and it's a it's a pretty good book really on to you uh john updike rabbit run i only have the one uh updike book i'm not sure if i'm going to read anymore i mean i enjoyed it but i'm not sure if there's anything more to be gained but you know please point point me uh that i'm wrong if that is the case and then conveniently, you'd think underneath, oh, Legend of a Suicide, David Van, V for Van. But actually, I'm going for the master, Kurt Vonnegut, um, who I think is, is he up here? Uh, he may not be up here, he may be on a diff. Oh, look at my, look at my uh, Fitzgerald. Some people organise their uh, bookshelves according to colours. Uh, colour scheme. I don't, but this is the one exception where I have all the Fitzcarraldo uh, together because I have uh, Zambrana, Zambras here. Uh, but the other Zambra book I have is, oh God, somewhere here. Um, oh, there we are. Uh, multiple choice, which I've talked about before. Now, by rights, they should be together, but that would spoil my Fitzcarraldo, so I'm not going to do that. Right, we were looking for Kurt Vonnegut. Oh, it might be here. No. Um, uh, there we go. Sword House 5. A classic. I've uh, got quite an old edition of Sword House. I wonder when this is published. God, to be falling apart. <sighs> the only other uh, Vonnegut book I've read is Cat's Cradle, which I read as a library book. Published in 1970, so what's that? 30, 48 years old, that book. Uh, the W. Uh, right, back to the postmodern section. Curtis White, an author I read this year and really enjoyed both books. This is Requiem. I talk about these in my postmodern wrap up. And this is the other one, Anarcho Hindu, which is a great title, by the way. Um, so that's W. I do not have an X. The only letter I don't have a writer for in either gender. As I said under the uh, when I was doing the women one, probably would need a, uh, a Chinese writer. Uh, why? Back to the science fiction section. Only have one book by this person. How to Live Safely in a Science Fiction Universe. 
Charles Yu. And very entertaining it was. I rather like that cover full of sort of toy ray guns. And that brings us on to Zed, the final book. Uh, Carlos Saffron. Uh, where is it? Um, you see how well rehearsed this is. Uh, I do want to show it to you for one reason, one reason alone. Oh, here we are. Shadow of the Wind, of course. Has he written anything else? I have no idea. Look at this. A sticker saying Richard and Judy's Book Club. Now, I think, out of all these books, I don't know how many there are. There were 160 in that. God. Uh, let's say 30, 30, 60, 90, 120, 150, 180, 210, 240, 270, 300, 360, 420, 480, about 540 plus 100. So about 700 books. This is the only one recommended to me by Richard and Judy. They didn't directly recommend it to me, it just so happened when I bought it, it had the approbation of that sticker. So there you have it. You have my uh, Authors A to Z, men, uh, tag, neatly wrapped up. And these are uh, so pleasing to me, but probably less pleasing to you, because, you know, there is a great obvious rationale to the organisation, my bookshelves. So, thanks very much. Till next time.